Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to one more event for Green Month in Tallinn University. Welcome to today's workshop, Protect Your Hormonal Health from Pollution, with uh, speaker Anna Treider. I'm very happy that she's here with us today and talk about this topic, a topic that personally speaks to my heart, because during my journey uh, for living without plastic, uh, skin care and cosmetics is an essential part of uh, this journey and also discover many changes that this has affected uh, throughout my life and that journey. And today's speaker, uh, Anna, is a person that I'm very thankful that she's uh, here with us today because besides the fact that she has sponsored this event uh, and uh, facilitated also another workshop in the coffee and responsible consumption, and she helped with her enterprise, the Refuse Plastic, today. Uh, she has also helped me with my own enterprise and support my own enterprise, Bean Free. And also she's a fertility awareness educator. She makes her own natural cosmetics. So this workshop was actually an opportunity to combine all these things together and create something that would be useful not only for me and her, but also for all of you who are here today and want to get more into living more sustainably, more naturally and protect yourself and your health. And that's all for me. Thank you again for being here and enjoy this workshop today. And Anna, over to you. Well, after such beautiful introduction, I feel um, shy. <laughs> um, but yeah, hello. I, uh, from my side, I am forever grateful to Katerina for inviting me to present this small lecture. I very much hope that indeed it will be interesting and helpful to some of you or all of you. So yes, my name is Anna and I am, so to speak, a person of many occupations and somehow all of them bring me here to give this presentation. So as Katerina mentioned, I am a fertility awareness educator, which means that I teach uh, menstruators that are mostly women to know if not everything, then at least as much as possible about their periods and hormonal health, to know uh, everything about their hormones, to become experts in their own reproductive health and make informed conscious choices in this area of their lives. I'm also quite, uh, quite an eco enthusiast. I cannot say a zero waster, but I'm I'm trying, well, I mean, uh, striving for perfection, but making small steps towards that. Um, I'm not only reuse, uh, reducing my own consumption of plastic, but also offering others an opportunity to switch to a convenient reusable alternative via my online shop, refuseplastic.today. And finally, I am trying to grow my own food in a community garden as much as one can grow on a garden bed of one square meter. And the answer is, actually a lot, more than you expect. And yes, I organize various uh, green lifestyle related events in the gardens. So I approach this topic of uh, health, not only of our own health, but also of the health of our planet from different sides. And well, here I am today. So even though it was announced that this event is mostly about skincare, we will also talk a bit more generally about the household products as well, because guess what? Many of the products that can be used for natural skincare are also possible to be used as household products because they're multifunctional. And this is just one of their good points. So let's get going. I will start with uh, the hormonal background. I imagine it is well known that we are affected by our hormones. As awful and incomplete as the reproductive health education is in schools, it does reveal as much. Well, thanks for that, at least. So from the, uh, for the ease of definition, I will refer to people now as uh, binary sexes they are born with, men and women, as I'm still on the way to kind of to shape my language to find the least awkward way to talk about it uh, in the most inclusive way. So when I say women, I mean everyone who is uh, men uh, menstruating, who has their periods. And when I say men, I mean those who were born with testicles and are uh, having uh, testosterone as the main hormone. So women are affected by the hormones of their menstrual cycle, which is called a moon cycle, actually not quite randomly. Before we had that much of light, artificial light pollution, uh, the cycles used to be more aligned with the moon phases. 
And men, on the other hand, are more aligned with the day rhythms and the sun. So it was scientifically proven that testosterone is the highest in the mornings. It is natural and normal. However, the external factors may disrupt our hormonal and consecutively our overall health. As I mentioned, the menstrual cycles got less regular and overall more chaotic due to artificial light as one of the reasons among many. Other reasons include global stress factors or like pollution from busy city life or very personal factors like life background stress that we tend to subject ourselves to without even noticing sometimes. And all of that massively contributes to our hormonal imbalance. And today let's focus on one very specific ingredient as sort of the bane of our existence in a way, along with everything else, um, because this particular ingredient, it is um, everywhere, everywhere. And it's not exactly possible to remove it completely, but it is possible to reduce own exposure to it and make a bit uh, a big improvement in our own hormonal health. So what is that? It is dinoestrogens. What are those? Those are either synthetic or natural chemical compounds. And if, like in the case of naturals, they're usually called uh, phytoestrogens. And what uh, they do is that they mimic the estrogens that are naturally produced by our bodies. And by mimicking our natural hormones, they act as endocrine disruptors as they disrupt and disturb our own hormonal balance. And by that, they mess with our endocrine system. What is the endocrine system? It consists of the glands that produce uh, the hormones right into our bloodstream. Our hormones act as chemical messengers that regulate our reproductive function. The endocrine glands include the uh, pituitary gland uh, in our brain, then the thyroid, the adrenal glands, and the reproductive glands either ovaries or testicles. We can look at, as, at the endocrine system as a, well, symphony in a way, because uh, hormones are like instruments. They operate in close cooperation with each other in a, like sort of never ending feedback loop. And of course, when hormones uh, that are not natural to our body enter the system, they throw this delicate balance away. And this may result in a whole range of um, problems. To make the long story short, let me briefly explain what the role of natural estrogens in our bodies is. So for women, it is a preparatory function for the possibility of conception. So whether we like it or not, the reproductive uh, system is meant to do exactly that, to reproduce. So um, it affects reproductive organs to allow uh, the sperm to survive in the vagina while waiting for the ovulation to happen. It also contributes to the growth of the endometrium, which will be discharged during the period. And overall, the cell growth in our body, that because uh, our bodies are changing uh, the mode of operation, preparing for the possibility of pregnancy. Then it also affects uh, the cervix position, uh, changing where it is located, how it is located, and how we can feel it, and also production of the cervical mucus. So those are the main ones, but also there are secondary symptoms of estrogen activity in our bodies, such as higher libido and also pheromone exertion. Also, we could notice it in our moods, like in the first phases of our cycles, we could feel a bit more adventurous, a bit more active. And after the ovulation passes comes the other hormone, which is progesterone. It blocks the estrogen impact. And with that, it also blocks the cell growth. For men, and yes, men also have a share of estrogen in their bodies, just as women have a share of testosterone in theirs. So estrogens in men system, in men bodies are produced in testicles and stimulate the production of the spermiums, affecting the smooth muscle and also the, uh, affecting the conjunctive tissue. But only it works in perfect balance when the hormone is in a specific proportion, like not too much. 
exposure to uh, xenoestrogens, as mentioned, uh, mentioned above, screws this balance up quite a lot. And what do we have as a result? So men may end up having a lower testosterone function and because of that, a lower libido, infertility, or even impotence, as well as lower sperm quality. And in addition to that, such like looks as beer belly and acne, as well as, well, male boobs are also one of these effects of exposure to the estrogen, xenoestrogens, like non-natural ones. As far as uh, women are concerned, uh, disruption of hormonal balance gives rise to such problems as I guess many of uh, us are very familiar with, like PMS, with uh, all accompanying emotional and physical symptoms that are, well, not necessarily very pleasant, as again, we may know. Then irregular cycles can also be due to hormonal imbalance. Period pains, uh, actually, did you know that well, periods can be absolutely painless. Well, um, hormonal imbalance is something to blame for that too. So um, another uh, effects of uh, hormonal imbalance and uh, estrogen dominance, excess of estrogen is weight gain that is hard to regulate. Then fertility problems that, that don't only include difficulties to conceive, but also a higher chance of miscarriage as well as prolifer proliferation, like growth of uh, breast cancer cells. As I mentioned, estrogens contribute to the cell growth and progesterone blocks the cell growth. So if uh, progesterone, like either because of not enough progesterone or because like progesterone on a needed level, but there is too many estrogens and the progesterone cannot block it, a proliferation of the cells continues and this can actually lead to nasty effects. So that doesn't sound any fun, does it? So where exactly can we found, find these xenoestrogens? And uh, pretty much awfully everywhere. And this is why, as I mentioned, it is particularly hard to eliminate the exposure to them completely. So um, first of all, uh, hormonal contraception because this is how it is supposed to work. By replacing the natural with fake, um, by making our ovaries unemployed and uh, removing some symptoms, but never the cause of a problem that led to the prescriptions. How does it work? So uh, when fake hormones come into our system, um, our brain that usually uh, kind of gives the green light to a cycle, and uh, sends to the ovaries a specific hormone um, so that the ovaries start producing natural estrogens. But when there's uh, like synthetic estrogens uh, flowing in our bloodstream, the brain believes that, oh, we already have enough. We don't need any more um, production. And so it just doesn't send the signal to the ovaries. There you go. Then conventional meat and dairy products because um, the animals in modern agriculture are pretty much fed with synthetic hormones to be bulkier, to produce more, and uh, all that ends up on our plate. Skincare products and makeup. The more delicious their smell and the longer their shelf life, the more probably they contain a wide range of estrogenic chemicals. Same uh, holds for the household products and for the perfume. Then BPA and phthalates, uh, which is something uh, that is commonly found in plastics. Conventional pads and tampons, they often contain dioxins and other chemicals, including xenoestrogens. Uh, they are derived from synthetic materials, materials and are often bleached. And we put them either in contact with our skin or even inside us, and this is like bad. Then farming chemicals, when they are uh, aimed to give your garden a perfect look or to yield a higher crop than would normally grow, also exposed to xenoestrogens, then pollution pretty much in the air around us. And uh, soy, soy is a natural uh, contain of uh, phytoestrogens like it is natural, but nevertheless, 
uh, it can act as a hormonal disruptor, unfortunately. Are you scared yet? Well, as I said, um, the xenoestrogens are pretty much everywhere around us. While we cannot completely ditch it because that would mean like not eating a lot of things, not breathing. I mean, yeah, we can aim at doing as much as possible. And uh, sometimes uh, getting rid of even a couple of sources of uh, xenoestrogens can have a nice positive effect on our hormonal health. And uh, DIY, DIY, as far as household products and especially skincare is concerned, um, as in the case of the latter, we put it directly on our skin is uh, especially like one of the good solutions. So now, finally, we move on to a more practical part of this event, well, practical. I will go over several ingredients that can be used around our homes and on our bodies for beneficial effect. Let's roll. Baking soda. Yeah, this is, well, we mostly know it for cooking, but um, it has a range of uses, for example, in skincare. Like you can make a deodorant or a toothpaste with use of it. Both uh, follow actually the same recipe of mixing baking soda with uh, coconut oil. But variations are possible. For example, you can add shea butter or some essential oils into the deodorant. Or as far as the toothpaste is concerned, you can add clay or activated charcoal for a nice black smile or even turmeric powder for a nice orange smile. Uh, but uh, those are already like fancy variations that are up to your liking. The very basic recipe of uh, baking soda and coconut oil is still the same. And uh, one thing to mention is that uh, people with especially sensitive skin should be a bit careful and potentially reduce the proportion of baking soda in this uh, mix. Also, as far as uh, deodorant is concerned, uh, for example, when you come home after a hike or a long day uh, that was active, you can use uh, a leg bath with soda and vinegar because it will not only deodorize your leg, but also soften and relax and help them to uh, recover after a day of work. Mm. Salt and soda mixture, well, actually so uh, soda on itself uh, works well as a scrub, but um, salt and soda is especially good in sauna because it's a good mix of scrubbing and softening, like uh, the salt, does the scrubbing and the uh, soda kind of mitigates the scrubbing effect by softening it a bit. It is especially good for uh, skins that uh, tend to be oily and it helps to balance the uh, pH, like the acidity of our skin. Uh, this is also quite a good mix to rub your head with uh, to increase the blood circulation around the follicles, also uh, to stimulate the hair growth too. And uh, as far as uh, the scrub on itself is concerned, soda can also go really, really well with honey, if that's an option for you. Washing your hair with soda. Now, that's, a, that's an interesting point, really, because, uh, well, you can either just rub soda straight onto your wet hair, and uh, that would work really, really fine as a shampoo. Or you can add it to a liquid shampoo that you already have. The only problem is that after such a um, like bombic way to wash your hair, it will it may get but like it will most probably get really really messy and tangled like a bird's nest. So hello Hermione's. Uh, to mitigate such effect, you would need to rinse it with uh, vinegar, which is like a perfect way to rinse your hair, whether you wash it with soda or not. So anyway, worth trying. But soda is great around the house as well. For example, it can do wonders as far as removing stains in, is concerned, especially in bathrooms. Uh, so you can just rub soda against uh, the tub, the sink, uh, the tiles, pretty much everything. Uh, just rub it, then rinse and uh, wipe the surface later because soda has a bit of tendency to leave the white stains then soda also helps to dissolve uh, the grease. Uh, for example, to clean uh, the microwave or to remove uh, the stains uh, either from food or from coffee. 
even the most stubborn ones uh, from the carpets. Soda is also quite a great uh, laundry detergent and you can just uh, add it to the detergent uh, you use or mix it with, guess what, vinegar again, because they're quite a good pair. <laughs> so just add it to the uh, softener or conditioner compartment of your uh, washing machine. And uh, if you don't want to use uh, vinegar or you don't have a detergent, you can just add some water, it will puff up and uh, work just fine. And finally, uh, polishing silverware is quite good with use of soda and yet again, coupled with vinegar. I mean, they are just a perfect pair for everything. And now we will move on actually to, to itself, to vinegar. Um, something to keep in mind as far as vinegar is concerned is that there are very many varieties. And if we speak of uh, skincare, I would recommend using the apple cider vinegar while as far as uh, all the things around the house are concerned, white vinegar, well, apple cider vinegar could also do, but in some cases, like in uh, especially stubborn uh, places that need a better cleaning, white vinegar, like strong white vinegar would, uh, would be really good. So uh, why is it good for body uh, care in general? Because uh, it helps to balance the pH, it uh, exfoliates, it stimulates circulation, and it fights uh, acne-causing bacteria. So um, my favorite way of using uh, vinegar is uh, hair conditioner. I usually add it to water, like um, one part of vinegar to like seven to 10 parts of water, maybe even, uh, even more parts of water. Um, another option is to add it not to water, but for example, a herbal tea or infusion for a better effect, just to find some interesting uh, herbs that contribute to uh, hair rejuvenating like uh, nettle or, well, chamomile. Uh, those are great, yeah. It uh, softens, but also vinegar is known to help to fight the dandruff as well. Vinegar is good as a skin toner. For example, you just mix it equal parts with water and it would be an effective cleanser, effective oil residue remover, balancer of uh, our sebum production and the pore unclogging agent. Um, another toner and the mild anti-acne agent would be a mix of uh, vinegar, aloe vera gel and water. It could be like you mix it well and you put it into a spray bottle and then just apply to some like reusable um, pad and uh, apply to your skin. And uh, it also works as a mild short-term deodorizer. Like it will not like, you know, the more chemicals there are, uh, the more effective uh, something is, as we think. And uh, comparing to conventional products from the shops, it would really seem that those natural, uh, they are like not helpful because you still like it come, like the smell could come back quicker or you will still sweat, but, but it's natural and it doesn't uh, block the pores. It just kind of eats away the odor creating bacteria. So even though it may initially seem a bit less effective and shorter term, at least it's natural. Um, around the house, um, vinegar is great as a cleaning product for the home, uh, surfaces, anything really. Um, a good recipe is one part vodka and one part vinegar. Here, I would recommend using this very strong, stinky white vinegar. But like to mitigate at least at, at least a bit to mitigate the stink, uh, you could use a couple of uh, drops of your favorite essential oil, then put it into an empty spray bottle. And uh, that would be your perfect solution, for example, for cleaning uh, glasses and uh, mirrors. And uh, because it effectively clean, uh, cleanses everything and leaves no traces as opposed to many other uh, detergents. Then conditioner for laundry, again, vinegar and soda. Vinegar in itself, like uh, I mostly use vinegar in itself, just pouring, um, pouring vinegar into the softener compartment till it's full, that's it. And uh, using a couple of essential 
oil drops there and uh, enjoying the smell of my flat for next couple of days while my laundry uh, dries up. Then um, it removes the stains on your clothes uh, that come either from sweat or from deodorants. Again, this is uh, the same recipe of one part vinegar, one part vodka. Uh, so you just apply it to uh, your clothes that have stains, you rub it uh, and you like wash it and then you leave it. And when it's dry, it will be considerably uh, less seen if not gone completely. Well, um, sink unclogging. Uh, guess what it comes with here uh, with soda pour a uh, half cup of soda into the drain then follow with one cup of vinegar and then flush with hot water and then you can wait a bit and then flush with cold water and that uh, is a very 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 effective way to unclog your sink laptop cleanser uh, cleanser use the uh, cotton stick and uh, all the small uh, dirt around your uh, keyboard will be gone and your laptop will look as good as new. Also for computer mouse, if you still have computers that use mouses. And uh, it could also refresh the carpets uh, by using the solution of one cup vinegar and eight cups water. Your carpets will look as good as new. So the next product we move on to is lemons. So those who enjoy lemons a lot would especially appreciate it because, uh, well, uh, lemon juice is nice, but we tend to have a lot of leftover um, lemon skins. What to do? First of all, cleanse the skin. Use lemon juice and uh, honey and some vegetable oil if you like and just apply it. It will, it will sting, if, especially if you have some minor cuts or burns or um, like insect bites, it will sting, but nevertheless, it's an effective cleanser. You can just take a, a lemon, like half of the lemon, uh, even if it's already been squeezed and rub it against your skin like that. It works well against the blackheads and uh, excessive uh, oil and sebum production. And apparently you can even rub your underarms uh, with uh, lemon halves, even again, even if they're squeezed, there's still some juice, you just rub them uh, against your underarm, underarms and you will have quite a good uh, deodorant effect. Uh, as far as this point is concerned, uh, I would only recommend uh, the lemons for that because uh, other citrus products tend to be, um, like they are sweeter and uh, they will make you Sticky, yes, they will remove uh, the odor, but uh, like it's not a pleasant sensation when, when it sticks mm, under your arms. So yeah, lemon, possibly lime, but like lemon is the best. Mm. As far as the uh, household uses of lemon uh, are concerned, it's perfect for uh, cleaning the wooden surfaces. For example, cutting boards. You just put the salt, sprinkle the salt over the area that you want to clean. And then you just uh, rub it with uh, a squeezed lemon half. Uh, surface cleaner, like you can make this uh, amazing surface cleaner when you put around like five or six uh, squeezed halves uh, in a medium sized jar and then fill it with white vinegar. Let it stay for a couple of weeks so it uh, soaks well. And then you stain the, uh, strain the peels out and you will have a perfect solution for surface cleaning and no need for chemicals. Also removing the scum from your bathroom. Again, sprinkle areas with uh, soda and use lemon halves to peel the dirt away, to rub it all away. Another uh, way of using it is uh, for refreshing the air. You can just leave the squeezed lemon halves all over the place pretty much. Um, whenever like you need some nice smell to be introduced, like put it into the kitchen, put it into the refrigerator, the rooms. Uh, yeah, just to like remember to take them away and uh, compost them timely because uh, even if they like, they uh, last for quite a while, but eventually they will start rotting and then the smell will not be as nice. I warned you. Um, an addition in the kitchen, like if you have a lot of uh, lemon peels or lemon skins, you could uh, dehydrate the peels and then grind them. And then you can add them to the pepper grater and uh, you will have a uh, lemon pepper. 
So another ingredient is something I talked in the previous seminar. <laughs> and now it's, uh, it will be just a short recap uh, of uh, how coffee could be good for your body and in the house. For example, as far as body care is concerned, uh, if you use it with uh, olive oil or coconut oil, it's perfect to use it as, uh, as a scrub. Just, uh, yeah, just mix it and then scrub and then wash yourself uh, properly. Then uh, hair mask, like it's good, but unfortunately after that you will uh, need some time to, uh, to rub all the coffee out of your hair. Another option is making a soap with it. If you use uh, a proper soap base and just add uh, coffee, coffee in moderate amounts, and uh, then it will also act not only as <coughs> sorry <coughs> not only as a soap but as uh, a scrubber at the same time two in one add some essential oil like uh, orange essential oil and it will be also delicious and then around the house um, one of the most important well most important um, ways how it can contribute is uh, putting the coffee into the garden beds to repel pests or for example to be a mulch or uh, you can add it to the compost because if you add coffee into the compost it will also uh, release the nitrogen and uh, this will contribute to the health of the compost and thus to the benefit of the soil. Then uh, deodorizer, again, you can put it pretty much everywhere. You can make sacks from old socks or even put it to drawers or post jog shoes anywhere, like nice little sacks, especially if you appreciate the smell of coffee. Like I'm one of these people who loves the smell of coffee but cannot stand its taste. So whenever someone drinks the coffee around me, I'm like, I'm bribing the grinds. I will make something out of it. You can use coffee in the uh, in craft, for example, for painting something brown or for dyeing something, guess which color, brown again, or for filling the toys. You can add the flavor to your food, for example, if you make flapjack or pretty much anything, like if you make marinades and you wouldn't mind the mild taste of coffee over there, or it is apparently really good if you rub your meat uh, before cooking it because it will tenderize it, like make it softer. And uh, also in the kitchen, you could scrub the surfaces um, or the stains uh, with coffee to have an ef efficient uh, like stain remover. So yeah, and let's move on to the next ingredient. And this is oats. Well, here I must say, I don't exactly know. Well, I guess there are some possibilities to use it for household, but uh, skincare is kind of the best way of uh, applying oats. For example, face mask. If you just soak the oats and grind them into the like smooth mass and then apply to your face. And this is especially good for uh, drier skins. You could also mix uh, the oats with honey or yogurt or even vodka, or as far as um, other like drier ingredients are concerned, you could add some uh, ground herbs or clay and it would have more benefits. But that's already like, uh, again, fancy additions. Oats on themselves are quite great. Then hair mask. You could make a, a, some sort of kissel or yogurt out of oats. Well, it's a bit of a like lengthy process and may not well, depending on what you want, it may or may not be worth it, but the process it, you just um, put, like let them soak, let the oats soak in water for several days and uh, use like um, one part of oats and like four parts of water, if not five. And then uh, when you sense the smell, you can uh, sense that it has started uh, fermenting, you just drain it and uh, boil the liquid that has come out of it. And it will turn into a quite a specific substance that would look like yogurt. It is very, very good. Like I promise it's very good for your digestion. It is very good for your skin, but it is very specific uh, in taste. And yes, you could use, you could just uh, rub it uh, against uh, your hair uh, to use as a hair mask on its own or as an ingredient with some other fancy 
additions to your liking, like coffee. Um, oatmeal could be uh, used as a scrub on itself or, for example, with sugar. Um, after you have made this uh, oat kissel or oat yogurt, you will have quite a lot of uh, oat uh, remaining. So you could just dehydrate that oat and grind it or just use uh, like skip the kissel, the yogurt part and grind the oats into the flour and add sugar, then add some substance, for example, in according with uh, like with your skin type, um, water for oily, aloe vera is universal, yogurt or oil for skins that are uh, more dry. And then just, yeah, apply it or for your face, for your body, anything. Um, oats could also work good as a dry shampoo. You could uh, uh, use oat flakes, uh, blend them into the powder, and uh, here you go. It will be quite light in color. So for example, if you have darker hair, you could uh, add some cocoa powder and uh, maybe some essential oils because, well, because why not? Because essential oils are good everywhere. Our next ingredient is something that, um, well, it's vodka. Not only suitable for drinking, actually a lot better in, in other uses of it. Like sanitizer, especially in our interesting times that we live in when hand sanitation uh, stands above everything. Uh, what to do? Uh, use vodka and uh, aloe vera uh, gel and use add like drops of uh, essential oils, peppermint would uh, do just perfectly, or like tea tree or eucalyptus, those that have uh, some mild um, sanit sanitation effects, and uh, put it into a bottle with, uh, with some like sprayer and just carry it around you and you are safe. Like uh, it's good for your hands, but you could also use it to sanitize the items uh, that you would want to sanitize, for example, uh, razors after, after shaving. Uh, you could make a, an herbal infusion with vodka, for example, to use it as face cleaner. Um, but uh, one thing is that uh, you should make sure to moisturize the skin after the use because vodka dries your skin, uh, like it has the tendency of drying your skin quite a lot. So how to do it, uh, you just uh, like coll collect or find your favorite uh, herbs like uh, mint or like rosemary would do really well. It will uh, smell amazing. Um, then sage, uh, but pretty much everything, even some flowers. You could, you just put it into the vodka bottle, let it stay for, for a couple of, well, a week, I would say a week, let it stay for a week and uh, then drain it. And then uh, there you go, ready to use. Also uh, such, well, infusion could be a good remedy for bad breath or just like a mouthwash and refreshing of, uh, of feeling in, in your mouth. Uh, for example, here, um, mint infusion or rosemary, rosemary infusion would be best. Just don't forget to spit it out. Well, or not if you prefer. Um, ice cubes with infused vodka, for example, you Again, all the same uh, herbal infusions, you just put them into the uh, ice cubes, let them freeze, and then you could use them on your face against inflammation and for general kind of uh, this boost of energy, like it's a hot day and you just decide to, yeah, it's time to fresh up a bit, works well. Uh, vodka is also good as a hair conditioner in one-to-one -one ratio with water, you just rub it in and uh, it's also quite good against the dandruff. Uh, it's also an effective deodorizer. And uh, the next ingredient is vegetable oils. Um, here, I would recommend using like the safest options is always olive oil or sunflower seed oil because they are universal and they're suitable for all skin types. Coconut oil is good, but it could provoke blackheads. Some other oils could, uh, could be a bit skin specific, but those two, olive and sunflower seed, are like good, affordable, universal catch. Just make sure to choose unrefined and organic. And how to use them? Body oil, face oil, you could add your uh, favorite essential oils. 
your fantasy is the limit. And uh, could also use uh, vegetable oils for hair care. For example, um, you could add to the very tips, uh, like tips, ends, ends to your hair uh, daily or every other day to keep them healthy and to prevent the dryness because the ends uh, tend to dry out uh, the first and uh, like that you would moisturize them to make sure they uh, stay healthy. Or you could uh, make hair masks or like just treat your uh, hair to oiling, apply warm not hot, but preferably warm oil to your hair. Keep it for some 40 minutes and then wash thoroughly. But uh, keep in mind that this may require a bit more shampoo that you would be used to, or like a stronger ones. Uh, because for example, not all uh, solid shampoos can manage uh, washing oil away. But for example, in my shop, I have one of the shampoos that effectively does it. I was quite surprised, like happily surprised. So yeah. and. Uh, Final ingredient is something that was already mentioned on a couple of occasions during the presentation is aloe vera. Um, the best use is, for example, uh, to use it as a base for the clay mask or like dry powdered masks, even, even for, the, yeah, for the old mask that I mentioned above. Uh, just mix the powder with uh, the gel and you will get a nice smooth paste for application. Then, um, Aloe vera gel is good as a skin moisturizer because uh, like before, if you want to uh, use some vegetable oil on your body or on your face, uh, put the aloe vera before because it would help the absorption. Uh, this, uh, this way the oils would uh, just get into your system and moisturize your skin more efficiently. A hair conditioner especially works for curly, but also for oily hair, or if you have an itchy scal uh, scalp, you could just simply rub uh, aloe vera gel into the roots. And it is also an efficient ingredient against the dandruff. Aloe vera gel is uh, great if you want to treat minor burns and insect bites or like small cuts. Just add some nice uh, essential oils with healing properties like uh, tea tree or uh, rosemary. And finally, um, you could use aloe vera gel with toothpaste powders. Uh, like as far as I'm concerned, um, Toothpaste in form of uh, powders is my least favorite way of brushing my teeth. Like I know they could be great. I know they could be helpful. But whenever I buy uh, a toothpaste powder just to check how it works, I usually end up using it as a face mask. Because guess why? Natural ingredients can go anywhere. Uh, but yes, uh, for example, if I use a bit of aloe vera uh, gel to make it into a paste, uh, it's actually quite great. So... Um, Overall, you see, natural is good, not only because it is natural, but also because it's multifunctional. Like, I personally wouldn't imagine using a commercial, uh, like, drainage cleaning agent on my skin, or vice versa. Or, for example, to use something for my hair to act a, as a deodorant. The commercial products indeed may appear more efficient. They do come into effect quicker and you will most likely need to apply less of them, but uh, keep the xenoestrogens as well as other uh, nasty chemicals in mind, as well as the fact that uh, the longer you use them, uh, it builds up in your system. And uh, like you don't always know what those ingredients are and you most likely do not want them in your system. And uh, exploring the natural options, you will see that it may end up as a cheaper solution in addition to you being able to control the ingredients of what comes into your product. Of course, uh, like it's better to approach this transition mindfully, maybe one step at a time to try one ingredient or one recipe to see how it goes. But yes, in the end, it proves to be good fun and it also fuels your creativity. So uh, thank you for the attention. And here are the links for two of my products. So Refuse Plastic Dot Today is the um, web link for my shop. And uh, Ovulation Witness Dot EU is uh, the link for my um, like fertility awareness project. Or for example, you could find them, both of them on Instagram, refuse.plastic.today or ovulation witness. This, uh, I imagine this presentation will be sent to you, so no need to rush uh, now. 
and yes i close the screen sharing and uh, yeah here i am thank you so much anna thank you very very much for describing each and every actually um ingredient that we can find in our houses and how it can effectively be used not for the purpose that we actually use it and how much important it is um I have two questions, but uh, before I do them, I would like to open a discussion and ask you if you have used any of these um, uh, recipes that Anna mentioned, or if you have your own recipes that you would like to share with us. So please unmute and share if you have done something already. Um, I got here like too late, so I didn't hear the beginning, but I, I, I use a lot of, of uh, vinegar for everything, like for cleaning, for getting rid of the whatever, uh, the calcium inside of uh, water kettles and uh, like just cleaning up all the bowls and tea and like just but uh, I think uh, the best part was uh, using the toothpaste powder with aloe vera. Like that's uh, that's like great great idea. And using the powder as mask. That's also like I, I use a lot of clay masks, and I just mix them with water and just mixing. I'm I'm now gonna do it. This is what I'm gonna do it today. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Celia, for sharing that and. Uh... We would like, I, I would personally love to see the, the result and hear your experience, how it is and how it goes. So that's a great uh, opportunity for me to share two things. So the first is that we have the Green Heroes uh, activity that takes place throughout the Green Month. So it's basically a form that you can see different activities that each of us does in our daily lives and support uh, uh, and act actually and behave sustainably and also you have the opportunity to write a small blog story about uh, something that you do regarding sustainability so that is one way that you can actually contribute and share it and the second one is a group that we made after the coffee uh, workshop to share some success stories there about how to upcycle uh, coffees, co coffee grounds, but also I guess we can open it a little bit so you can join there and share either pictures, either recipes or whatever you want to, or some worries or some failures sometimes is a part of learning as well in that group. Um, so that's the sharing of links from my side. And if someone else would like to jump in. I have another type of question a bit. Uh, so lately I've been seeing in like regular shops, a lot of shampoos from quite these companies that like make everything basically like Garnier or maybe Schwarzkopf or something like that. And they say that they have like more natural shampoos, maybe 96% natural or 98% natural. So how natural are they really like, are they good? Should we use them or should we still prefer to make our own stuff? One question, are they usually like liquid shampoos? Uh -huh. um, well, uh, first of all, as far as liquid shampoos is, uh, are concerned, uh, it is uh, bad for the environment <laughs> because uh, usually plastic bottles and uh, yeah, storage, uh, like plastic bottles uh, contribute to, like they have to be produced, they have to be, um, like the products are stored in them. So they release uh, all these BPAs and phthalates and whatnot into the product itself. So it's already like not exactly as natural and great as uh, we would like, even though they claim to be natural. And finally it contributes to uh, the waste, like the plastic waste. So um, as far as the ingredients are concerned, I imagine that yes, uh, some companies are trying uh, to, to make it better. But uh, yeah, it's something to keep in mind that uh, we still, like whenever we buy from those big companies, like 
it's already off topic. It's a bit of like a consumerism topic and uh, screwing the corporations and all that. But yeah, whenever we buy their products, we still uh, vote for them rather than, for example, um, local producers or those who only produce natural ingredients. So like it's like it's better than uh, no options at all from those companies. But at the same time, something still has to be kept in mind. I can jump in on that a little bit and talk about it and share also with you an article that I wrote about that topic is that from the companies, the big companies, when they see in general that there's a big shift in the market, so people are actually going to more natural, they try to find something that it can sell to those that are unsure. So those that know that continue with the conventional is bad, but they don't know exactly what is bad. Uh, in other terms, this could uh, called as greenwashing. I'm not saying that each company is doing that, but in a high, let's say, rate, this is happening. And whatever it has to do with strong chemicals, even though in the one side you can find it in uh, liquid format, and after you see it again in a solid format, yes, you reduce the plastic pollution, but at the same time, this toxic uh, the acceptance is already there and especially would like to mention the sulfates that is important to have it in uh, uh, shampoos or conditioners but it's better to go for um, how it's called not the to the um, Oh my God, the I found the word, okay. The natural ones <laughs> and not the chemical ones. Uh, I had this issue with my hair and sulfates is something that actually comes directly from your skin. It goes directly to your blood, is absorbed directly. And I was losing a lot of my hair using conventional shampoos and everybody was like, oh, it's normal. It's because you have long hair and you just lose them. And after since I shifted to solid shampoos and natural ones, uh, this has stopped uh, happening. And it's been already three years. And sometimes that I didn't have, you know, the opportunity to have a solid shampoo and I had to use a liquid one. I still from day one started uh, losing hair again. And I have seen that it affects so much the, the balance in my body and how I, I react in everyday life. So yes, it's good that they move to something more natural, but actually you have to find out what they actually changed? Is this just the package or is what they have inside? Don't know, Anna, if you have to, to mention and add something about that. You're muted. <laughs> Not at the moment. Well, I mean, uh, indeed, it is important to always check the ingredients of uh, what you what you have uh, in the products that you want to buy but yeah also liquid shampoos they also have usually the um, added conservatives because uh, the, like in the liquid form um, gives space for bacterial growth and uh, like the preservatives, they just have to be there to prevent that. And as far as the solid forms are concerned, solid forms are usually antibacterial. So it just doesn't grow in there. So at least a couple of crap ingredients to uh, preserve the form are removed. So it's already better, but still indeed better to check always. Thank you. Somebody else? Just from your own personal experiences, have you noticed a change in like your hormonal issues after going to natural products, to homemade products? Well, it's a long process personally for me because, uh, well, I am, um, I try to eat vegan and veganism includes a lot of soy, so I cannot <laughs> exactly remove this, but uh, I've... Uh, I've noticed, yeah, uh, like whenever I uh, resort to something that is not as natural, my cycles get worse. And it is something that it is possible. Like uh, I can speak about cycles for ages, but the thing is that our cycles are really, really responsive to the environment we're in. And sometimes it's uh, even possible to uh, see the effect of what we are having in our lives quite immediately, like in this cycle or in the next couple of them. So yeah. Uh, 
I would say yes, then. Generally, uh, the natural uh, products contribute to better cycles. From my side, I don't know about the cycles, but I have noticed this, like getting a little bit more to natural uh, products and not only about skincare, about whatever I eat, how I dress up, what, what I use in my daily life. I have seen that, for instance, my acne, that it was one part of my uh, hormones, let's say, uh, this balance has improved quite a lot but also could be that i'm in estonia and i'm not in greece and i'm not so much with sun uh exposed to sun so let's see let, let's discuss that again if we go back and uh elena mentioned also something in the chat about the microplastics uh, preservatives also fragrances that could contain those artificial shampoos could make up four percent uh, that is not mentioned i as i understand it is about the level the the amount of microplastics that are inside this uh, cosmetics. Elena, would you like to talk more about that? Elena? Oh, okay. One of the participants mentioned the products that are being sold as 96% natural. And 4% are like extreme crap that are not even mentioned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I understood that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, th thank you very much. That's that's very important. But as I said, it's like marketing stuff. Like 96 is okay, just 4 is crappy. But it's still this 4% 4, 4 there. Um, yeah, somebody else would like to mention the Erica. I always pick you. I'm sorry for that, but <laughs> you always have something to say. Uh, I mean, I, I really enjoyed this uh, presentation because I've actually been using a lot of uh, vinegar, uh, baking soda and lemon um, when I clean. But I think I would be interested to try some of those uh, other properties that they have. But one thing that I really enjoy uh, when using these ingredients when uh, cleaning is that they're so cheap um, and really effective and also they're natural. So you kind of get every benefits, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's great to hear. Th thank you very much. And I think we are running also on time and we're just uh, on time actually. So I would like to thank Anna once more for sharing all this knowledge with us and make us experts in uh, using natural ingredients for uh, our health, of our skincare, body care and cleaning, which is also very important. And all of you that are here, and once more, I will uh, invite you to share some sugar treats for nurture ourselves, not only with natural ingredients from outside, but also to nurture ourselves inside. So by filling this form, you can actually leave a positive note either to your fellow attendees, the organizers, our speakers, and spread some happiness until the end of April. And you can leave it also anonymous, so you don't have to re reveal your identity. You can still spread happiness uh, without revealing who you really are. And uh, if you don't have something else to, to say from my side, it's a big thank you. Enjoy the sun and continue consuming naturally. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.